It's like talking to two wings of an aeroplane today. Over here we have business class. They get the big meals when they come around. Welcome, business class. Nice to see you. I think because it's a narrative generation, millennials will deal with what I call the expectation gap. If you're a millennial, you represent a generation which, when it came out of school and university, did not inherit the world it expected to. In many countries today, in the Western world, millennials face higher university debts than any generation before. I lived in Australia for 36 years. That's my homeland. I've lived in Europe for 22 now, so Europe's catching up. But I remember having free education at university for six years. I studied to be an architect, which is one of the reasons I find Berlin so fascinating and this building so interesting. But now, of course, in many parts of the Western world, it's paid, and the, number, the figures go up every year. Millennials face pension pain. The rate or the ratio of workers to retirees is going to halve in the next 20 or 30 years here in Europe. We're going to have half as many workers paying for the same level of pension and social care for an aging population. It's millennials that will bear most of that cost, and they know it. Housing is an issue. Here in Germany, it's an issue. I mean, Germany's top five cities grew by 10% since 2000. 60,000 people. Rents have gone up, you know that. Yes, the government has targets for building new houses and apartments. The question is, can they, can they match them, and is that enough anyway? So there's an expectation gap for many millennials, and I think there's going to be a lot of innovation brought to bear on trying to solve that problem. I don't have time to go into that in too much detail today. There is one other revolution underpinning the smart age. It's the automation revolution. 15 years ago, Sony couldn't get a robot to walk. Now they can run, play football, and greet presidents. Sony has a wing of its resource and research facility in Japan devoted to robot anthropology, the study of how machines will interact with us at every level of life. The US Navy right now is debating seriously whether robots can be taught to think morally and ethically. Some people say, how can robots think? Well, actually, machines think now. By analyzing big data, they're actually improving on their own programming. So in a sense, in a very rudimentary sense, they are learning. Because of automation, along with globalization and digitization, we have a new generation emerging, aged 5 to 19. It's quite different to millennials. It's Generation Edge. It's a self-reliant self generation. Unlike millennials who are more collaborative, working together, Gen Edges tend, at least from the signs we see now, to work separately, individually, for a big cause. It's a pragmatic generation. It's not as idealistic as millennials were. It's a reformist generation. It doesn't see rebellion as a, as a sort of a mask of greatness. You know, I'm a rebellion, I'm a rebel. It doesn't see it that way. It's not defined by misbehavior, if I can use that term. It's a generation that sees rebellion as a way to get reform. So if you go and lecture older Gen Edges today, you'll find that they see whistleblowers as the heroes of the story, some millennials do too, because they are bringing about reform through rebellion. And here's the surprising one for many of us. It's a conservative generation when it comes to some ethical issues. I don't have time to quote some of the studies we've seen in the last two weeks about this in Britain, but it is true in much of the Western world. In Britain, for example, in the last 10 years, rates of drug abuse and alcohol abuse among teenagers have gone down dramatically. And there is no governmental reason for this. There's no policy reason for this. The only reason we can track is generational change. This is a generation, as I said, that doesn't define itself by the, things it, the rules it breaks, essentially. It's very different. A couple of years ago, a young woman um, in the United States got Seventeen magazine to pull all of the photos out of its magazines that were in any way photoshopped. She had 100,000 responses to an online petition to bring that about. Around the same time in the United States, some young men in the southern states of America put out an app to allow young men, especially black men, to report police abuse in the wake of the death of Michael Brown. Around the same time, in the north of England, a young woman set up the No Makeup Selfie campaign, where women, including celebrities, would put photos of themselves online without makeup to raise money for cancer research. 
In one week, that young woman raised eight million British pounds for cancer research. This is one of the key things about Generation Edge for the future. They're a low trust, big noise generation. They don't have any faith in institutions to speak of, and they want to bring big change, but they see their area for change as the digital space. For them, it's the digital area, not taking to the streets like Occupy did, the digital area that will bring about the change. I think we're going to see this generation calling for more autonomy in an age of automation. We're going to see great innovation from this generation in the next 10 to 15 years in terms of underemployment because of automation. 230 million jobs worldwide will go in the next 20 years because of automation. It might be more than that. 35% of UK jobs will be gone in the next 20 to 30 years because of automation. And this problem of unemployment is not going to go away, and I think we're going to find, yes, technology, you're right, will bring new jobs, but the question is, can we, can we as human beings make the transition fast enough and make it many times through our lives? I think this is an area where we will see this generation starting to make important strides. They will be the ones pushing for more innovation hubs. Within Berlin today, we have several innovation hubs. In the area of fuel, green fuels, alternative fuels, we have some. In the area of gaming, online games, uh, technology to do with the internet, we have that here in Berlin. But in the next 15 years, it will be Generation Edge that drives innovation hubs. Why? Because in an age of high tech, they recognize the need for high touch. They will want to humanize the digital. Bank of America did an interesting study last year. 90 of its workers were given censored badges and asked to go about their work for one week. At the end of that week, the Bank of America found that those who were most productive in the company, this is the biggest bank in the USA, by the way, the ones who were most productive were the ones who mingled more with other people, which led the Bank of America to totally change its coffee areas, to make them kind of cool to be in, nice music, nice decor, better coffee, they saw that people left their desk, came to have coffee together, and within four months, the Bank of America across the states saw a 10% increase in its productivity. So this isn't just pie in the sky. This is real, pragmatic business sense, but I think it's Generation Edge that will drive that innovation. They'll also drive innovation in privacy. Mark Zuckerberg said privacy is dead, get over it. I don't know why anybody would want to trust their money to Mr. Zuckerberg's new bank when he doesn't believe in privacy at all. Samsung last year put out, uh, did you see this? In, was it in the newspapers here? Samsung globally put out a warning to the users of smart TVs, Samsung TVs, to say that you should be wary because the voice recognition technology in our smart TVs can record conversations in your living room. They are then stored in the cloud, and we at Samsung are now aware that hackers are hacking into those conversations. George Orwell would have loved that. You know, your television is watching you. Big data is great, but it's still a form of soft surveillance when you think about it. We have the, 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 the challenge for Gen Edges in the next 15 years of biohacking. There's a workstation called Epicenter right now in Sweden, just outside of Stockholm, where workers are encouraged to have a biochip implanted in their arm with which they can open the security doors at work, pay for their lunch at the canteen, run the photocopy machine in the office. And it sounds very cool to some people, you know, especially in the age of wave and pay and phone payments and all that. Yeah, let's just cut the middleman out altogether and do it biologically. But we have to remember that any computerized device can at least in theory be hacked. So do we want the human body to be hackable and trackable as a device? There's the challenge of digital debt too. You know, as we increasingly take away the substance of money, the weight of cash, even if we don't use it very much, it's nice to know it's there. The weight of cash in your pocket. As we remove that from the spending process, I think we make it easier for people to spend without forethought, without thinking about it first. That's why in countries like the UK, the USA today, debt is going through the roof, personal debt. It's in part a response to the digitization process with money. I think we're going to see Generation Edge pushing for innovation with cognitive function because it recognizes the challenges of the digital age when it comes to the way the brain works. Millennials don't tend to bother with this, but Generation Edge will and is. For example, there's growing evidence that we're starting to think more shallow now because we use digital so much, 
and we multi-screen. So we shallow think. We think broad and narrow, but not broad and shallow rather, but not narrow and deep. We don't specialize. We have general knowledge, but we don't really have specialist knowledge. There's evidence of transactional relationships between human beings and machines. Um, my wife Davina and I have been married for 36 years. She's an amazingly patient woman, and we formed a transactional relationship. There's a transaction that goes on. She remembers certain kinds of information better than I do. I remember certain kinds of information better than she does. And together, we, we kind of get it right at least now and again. That's a transactional relationship. We do that with machines. You and I don't remember what we learn on the internet. We remember where we found it. We rely on the machine to remember it. We rely on Evernote or Pocket or something else to remember what we've actually read. And because it's not built into human memory, it doesn't produce future innovation because new ideas always come out of connections between old ideas. I think it's Generation Edge that will lead the big changes when it comes to alternative fuels. Some of you millennials that are passionate about this may not like me saying it, but let me point out to you, we have a lot of know-how right now. The technology is not the problem. We already know how to build zinc air batteries that charge up through connection with the air. They're not consumer viable, we haven't perfected yet, but we know how to do it. We know how to build bio batteries that charge through connection to the electrolytes in the human system, the human body. We know how to, to build thermal uh, energy units that suck the hot rocks technology, it's called, that take energy from under our feet in the molten core. We know how to use carbon extraction, sucking carbon out of the atmosphere, recycling it for fuel. It's costly at the moment, but the technology's there. It's not the technology alone that's the problem with alternative fuels. It's the human will to change. I think Generation Edge, being very pragmatic in their approach to things and reformist in their attitudes, will be the ones that will actually put the rubber on the road when it comes to alternative fuels. And finally, I know you're waiting for that word, so there it is, finally. I think Generation Edge will be a very risk-taking generation. That's good news for Berlin. The Prognos study of 2014, which looked at Berlin and the smart age, said, if Berlin is to play its proper role in the smart age and smart industry, its higher education sector must encourage and teach entrepreneurship. I remember watching as a primary school student in Melbourne, Australia, the landing on the moon of Apollo 11. And even as a kid, I knew this was a seminal moment in history. But what most people don't understand is three weeks before that event, the lunar landing module test unit crashed and burned, almost killing Neil Armstrong. And I'm really glad there were no British health and safety people around at the time. I know you don't have these people in Germany, nothing like it, but we have these people that are all about health and safety and keeping everybody safe, and they do a good job. But if they'd stepped in, we wouldn't have had Apollo 11 and the landing on the moon. NASA had a philosophy that said, if you're going to fail, and we will fail along the way, fail fast, fix it fast, and move on fast. And I think for Gen Edges, that's a great motto. I think that many of them are already starting to live that way. I know I'm going to fail in a worthwhile endeavor, so let me fail fast, fix it fast, and just move on quietly and get, get it done. So what do we take away from today? Hopefully, hopefully, you take away at least a couple of things. One, the technology is not destiny. We are not a product of the technologies we use. Innovation is about human choice. Not the management of problems, but leadership, creating different cultures where solving problems is normal. With different generational traits, millennials and gen edges will try to solve different problems, bringing innovation to different areas of need. We, you and I, can get ahead of the change curve by creating cultures to address those problems in advance. We can get ahead of the curve by creating cultures to deal with some of the issues we talked about today, migration and its social cohesion issues, ethics, the trust deficit, the ethical debates going on in economics, ecology, getting pragmatic results from technology that actually exists but isn't being fully utilized, autonomy in an age of automation, in areas like employment, underemployment, privacy, and productivity. Thank you so much for your time. It's been great to come to Berlin and address such intelligent and good-looking people. Thank you.